the word of god is alive and powerful sharper than any two edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart all scripture is god breathed and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of god might be mature thoroughly furnished unto all good works study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth or accurately handling the word of truth glory be to my unique lord god almighty in the heaven forever and forever to the highest and peace be to be mankind on this earth those who are being sanctified by the spirit and its truth by believing in the lord and savior jesus christ the only process which our lord knows that we have to go by faith alone in christ alone one more day being renewed to the praise of the glory of our lord and savior jesus christ in the midst of this great tribulation period of sufferings not after the rapture of the church but right now every day as lot's soul was been waxed lotsum because of the unjustness lawlessness that was happening in the midst of his generation so i am referring in that point of view the tribulation or the waxing of the soul today for the righteous believers on this earth who love the word of the lord very accurately who love to honor his word above his name who love to willingly sacrifice their life not expecting any rewards for it but being a bond slave but being a decimos but being a prisoner for Christ on this earth in order to make sure that his name alone is been exalted on this earth and many of the people who really do not know that one more day being renewed for our lives on this earth demands some greater glorification for Christ not greater blasphemy not greater damnation not greater apostasy and heretics and heresy but of only one simple truth glorification because he has that kratos power to be manifested through us because to him alone belongs that crat has power right peter in the closing of his epistle in first the crat has power belongs to our lord but how can we acquire that crat has power to manifest until and unless we go to the dynamis the ability given for us and in the very much plausious wisdom of god we could be his own power so that now we can show forth the glory and the honor because he is worthy of praise and glorification of that one beautiful word used in ephesians 1:3 blessed eulogia he is worthy of praise and glorification for the grace that has been renewed upon us day by day though we are not eligible to receive it and we know very well again today many people will use it for vain glory not worthily because they find their competency or enoughness in the accommodation or authorization of men but apostle paul says we have been made able ministers by the authorization of god and there is nothing that could distract there is nothing that could be want to put to take that greater desire of him to fulfill the desire of our lord that is what the word which has been used in second corinthians 3:5 we are not of men our competency is of god and he is going to fulfill it he is going to have that sufficient in us the desire desired result for a pastor teacher who is having this bona fide gift that competency that effectiveness that teaching should come from the ministry of lord god the holy spirit and that effectiveness could be done in you only when you are willing to be faithfully prepared in the word
in the fellowship of life get the Holy Spirit. Therefore, Apostle Paul quotes in Ephesians 3, 1, I have been made a prisoner, decimus, not daulas, prisoner. Daulas is a bond slave. Decimus is a prisoner, bound one, not bond, but bound. So that now we could really enjoy the sufferings, the sufferings for his body, for the church. If our something which has been lacking to the perfection of that, through our end by the suffering in our body, we need to teach the word of the Lord that is the greatest suffering for this body in Christ. And while we are teaching, men should listen by sitting upon that pew. Or in my country, India, they sit by folding their legs in India in the mat. That is a suffering for them because they have to grow up, they have to listen, they have to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and learn the truth. And day by day process, it is a tough time for them to sit like that and listen the word of the Lord and grow up and effectively reproduce for the glorification of Christ, who is worthy of praise. But today, men who have been fallen into the section, particularly tending towards emotionalism, legalism, morality, and some men like Morgan Freeman, who is going around the entire world to search, in search of God. And he comes to my country, India, and he wants to unlock some of the things of their religion, of their philosophies. And he wants to know what is God, where is God, how is God. All those things will be explained for you by your right pastor teacher in your congregation, if you ever attended the congregation. If you have ever known that there is a pastor in the church who has to teach you these things long back, before you could pass out a sophomore year of your life. Because we believers knew very well the gods of this world are no gods. There is only one God right from the beginning. You cannot give an image to him. You cannot name him or you cannot place another God on behalf of him. There is only one God. Adonai Elohim, Adonai Akad. Whether you take it, I am speaking dogmatically or whether you take it, I am talking irrespective of their religion beliefs. I don't care what my Bible says, that's the final, that's the ultimate. Not here to please men, not here to please the people who think. I am arrogantly dogmatic. The word, what it says, it stands forever and forever, that's it. You believe it or not, you take it or not, you consider it or not. When my Lord said, there is no other God besides me, that's it, there ends the matter. You cannot go in seeking and searching their books. Because they are not having the true inspiration of the scriptures. The word Theonistos, which has been used for Second Timothy 3, 16 and 17, all scripture is God-breathed. This scripture of the word, what we are handling in our hands, is God-breathed. It is God's document. It doesn't have your household things to be mentioned of your material or, or the physical things of this earth. It has only the spiritual things, whether you believe it or not. It does not mention under class 1 or class 2 that you should have the physical properties, the physical things on this earth. It talks purely about the righteousness so that we could meet the essence box of God and we could be absolutely present there in His presence when we can go and walk through Christ, our Lord, our Savior. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God meant to say, no one can meet that essence box in Christ. With their good deeds, with their works, with their legalism, with their attitudes, what they are performing, with their pious meditations, with their do-goodism, with their transformation of minds or renovation of their thinking. Reforming this world will give you evil out of evil, but not good out of evil. But our Lord calls to be an ideal one. It requires the knowledge of Bible doctrine, that righteousness of Jehovah, absolute righteousness plus ours. And that absolute righteousness is being credited to our account by grace, through faith, by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, by His redemption work, 
graciously planned by Lord God the Father for us. While we were at sinners, Christ died for us. And now being reconciled through his death, how much more we could be saved by reconciling through his life who has been brought again through his resurrection. And his appearance of 40 days teaching about the kingdom of God. Making us to explain what are the things pertaining in this till the point of AD 96, the completion of canon in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. And giving us this sufficiency in Christ. So that we could no longer toss to and fro by every wind or slight of doctrine of this world through vain philosophy, through their vain decide, through their signs. Which are nothing but devil's mind deviating your mind from the word of the Lord anything or everything is of devil even the so-called pastors today in the congregation who stand to teach about miracles or healings or tongues and deviate the pure word of God the sincere word of Lord are also of great devil on this earth. They are not really living upon the sincere word of Bible doctrine. Neither they are considering what it is to be in Christ in the sincere word. What faithfulness it has been required for us to communicate this truth. How much preparation has been required on our behalf to handle this word, which is immutable, which is absolutely veracity. Many people do not know those who stand in the pulpit to train the congregation what it has been absolutely required for us to tell the truth. They are not even able to understand why God created man in result to resolve this angelic conflict. They are not even able to understand a minister is a dispensationalist, a dispenser. Iconomia, Iconomas. Because they think they're shepherding the flock to teach some morality like other religions do and cause them to grow up in that word which is so legally being practiced in our pulpits through their emotionalisms. Feeling guilty, sorry for sins. Going out, coming again the next week, doing the same thing. When will you be the right ambassador for Christ? When will you execute this protocol plan of God when you can learn that you are a king for Christ? And if you are a king for Christ, it demands that you need to write Bible at least once. And if you are a pastor teacher, it demands that you write Bible at least twice. Once in the original languages of the scriptures. And prior to that, once you need to write in the translation, whichever you read or through the interlinear things, go back to the literal word. Even in the KJV, what we find in Luke 22, 11, the good man of the house will lead many people to be pious and good, but good man is not been found in the original Greek. Just go to the Haman who is following there, and he will be there already prepared for you to pick and participate in this Passover, Sath our Lord. Not good man, good man has been translated. Dear brethren, like that, Many things which are there and which are not there from the original languages of the scriptures will be inserted and when you will come to know in your entire life. If you are a profession in your if you are a professional in your profession, do you think you depend upon vanity or fake things? No, no do, do you not depend upon the truth, upon the veracity, upon the immutability of that profession? And do you go and tell about that? You practice about that. How much more it should be for us when we handle the word of the law. The only document on this earth which is absolutely God in written. Because who is the counselor for my Christ? Who can deduce his steps? But we have the mind of Christ. The completed canon of scripture. The Bible. Through his mind, we need to go back and look what are his holiness. Because he is holy, we need to be holy. And that does not include your morality, but it includes virtue. Astrotheos. Which has been 
out of pure love for the satisfaction of God as when we live into this holiness of Jehovah. Men may think like the way how the great philosophers were there in the Greek period. Sophocles or Aristotle, Plato, Socrates or the one who was an advisor for Caesar. Among all these things, the great man in the Roman country, the only genius one was a believer who was Paul. The unbeliever who was also a genius but who did not believe in Christ was Julius Caesar. Though they have their thinking, they come to the philosophy of this world to conclude, to live a moral life, to live a good life. Not to harm others, not to hurt others, then he will go to heaven. No. Christianity has not been called for that. Faith alone in Christ alone, because you are a habitable place, Grizo, which has been absolutely designed in eternity past, in the mystery doctrine of this church age, so that now you can come to know and conclude and understand what is the truth. What is the belief? What is the morality? And what is the differentiation between the vain philosophies of this world and learn the true doctrine of Christ, the mind of Christ? You are Alec Enicetesus with the great polity of privileges of all time. You are Togo Varalis, manhood given to you at the moment of salvation. By faith alone in Christ alone. And you cannot compromise with the things of this world to speak along. To move along by Nicola Pine's deed, getting compromised. But rather in return you are being called to show forth the glory of Jehovah, the wisdom of Christ on this earth. The manifold wisdom, the much color variegated wisdom of Christ through an absolute status quo by the church. And we are here to manifest that great righteousness among the midst of this perverse and crooked generation who do not know by holding forth the word of light, shining as light luminaries among them, so that they could be understanding that we are blameless, faultless, we cannot find any mixture in this earth with the mentality of this cosmos diabolicus of this world. But we are pure in Christ, thinking in Christ, we are learning doctrine, we are living divine viewpoint rather than human viewpoint. And that is what the ultimate reason why our Lord has chosen for us in a great past to be for Him. But we say, Lord, who loves that? We don't want it. Though you are our forerunners, after the order of Melchizedek, after the high priest, we don't want to learn. Because we don't want our sufferings, we don't want to be established, we don't want to be stabilized, we don't want to be settled. So that we can give through you, to you, through that sufferings, up, upon that patience, and have that absolute confidence in you. Because your love is shed abroad in our hearts. And we need to show forth your holiness as we walk the holy walk of life on this earth. The end times, the perilous times are more today. Men love the pleasure of their own rather than the pleasure of God. That's why no proper isagogic exegesis or categories of the subject in the pulpits today with the right dispensing technique of dispensations. Because they don't have that completeness or their sufficiency from God. If they would have had that enoughness or completeness, the desired result of our God in them through the Spirit, then they would have definitely been the tongue for the Spirit on this earth. Our Lord says very clearly in John 8:47, You are not able to hear the declarations of God because you are not of God. How can any man declare it is not Logos, it is declaration Rima? Until unless Lord could raise faithful pastor teachers who are having their sufficiency from the Spirit. And how will be the men really sent from God? until unless they could not believe the teachings of that Rima. The only differentiation what we can find today, the pastors themselves do not know what to Rima in the church. Before the foundation of the world, our Lord has chosen to be holy and blameless and without spot, irreproachable in the presence of Christ. 
in the presence of Lord God the Father through Christ. And before the foundation of the world, our Lord has written and kept for us this mystery doctrine of the church age. So that we no longer toss to and fro for XYZ reasons babbling around in our lips. But we need to learn because the investigation department will be done by Lord God the Holy Spirit only when we are in fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit. And that great investigation department done by the Lord God the Holy Spirit makes us not to have doubt. And it causes us to search even the deep things, the mystery, mystery, mystery which has been hidden and kept before the foundation of the world, but now revealed. And for this cause, Apostle Paul became a prisoner for Christ to reveal this mystery for us. So that in return, we can show forth to the principalities of the powers which have been totally blotted out. Through the boldness triumphing over them. That there is nothing that can hinder us. Therefore, we can teach to them through Christ. But the problem with us is we do not love to learn the word of the Lord, to study Bible doctrine, to understand the plan of God, to be exposed for the thinking of Christ. Because these people think Christianity as one among the religion. No, Christianity is never a religion. Christianity is a relationship with Lord God the Father through His only begotten Son on the cross, that whosoever believes in Him shall never perish but have an everlasting life. And here, God does work for man, and man receives it by faith. Religion, man works to gain the approbation of God, and God rejects them because they don't have that absolute righteousness which could satisfy that essence box of God, wherewith men have really fallen short of the glory of Jehovah. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God, no matter however you live your life, how pious, how intelligent, how clean, how pure. Without having Christ in you, no entry to the heaven, because our Lord said there is no name given for you in the heaven or in the earth or in the sea. So that you could be saved. The only name that you could be saved is Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior. The greatest decision in your life is not that what you make at the moment of marriage when you fall in love for the first sight or married at the first instance. That is nothing. That is still not the greatest decision, but the greatest deception for you. The greatest decision in life, whether you have you believed in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ as your Savior or not. This deception, disillusion, or the rat coming out from the shining armor for certain after a few days, is not greatest decision. Even unbelievers live a better life in my country, India. They have much more respect for their marriage and they keep it till to the point of their death. Their departure or their divorce is not while they are living at the point of their death. That's the greatness of my country. They value that relationship. Not like the Western. We have something called a Saptapadi. And we do not even know what it is in the marriage that you are talking about. Marrying at the first instance is of a great decision in my life. The only decision for every believer or unbeliever on this earth, have you believed in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ or not? If you have not as an unbeliever, then believe that will be your greatest life because after that you can have the true enjoyment in Christ, the true life in Christ. And if you are a believer after believing in the Lord, the true enjoyment for you is to grow up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. No excuse for that. Trading ignorance and arrogance at the judgment seat of Christ is not an excuse. You need to handle it rightly. You need to learn it rightly because it is your life. You can have meaning for that. You can have definition for that. You can have everything and anything that Lord desires for you to have and is pleased for you. While we were ex sinners, Christ died as, a, as on behalf of us. Now we have his sons and children. How much he will do for us? He will do much more than the most. We are more than conquerors, said Romans 8, 34. But are we really more than conquerors? The thing that overcome at this world is faith. Faith being a non meritorious system of perception. When God promised you believe that he is able to do it and he has done it. 
in the life of Abraham with patience, endurance, he has got it. And while we are still for a short time on this earth, the pilgrimage on this earth, we don't require any other reasons rather than going through the sufferings for Christ because the one who doesn't go the sufferings, our Lord calls him as a bastard. And the faith healers, miracular workers of the tongues movement want to elevate this suffering and not to stabilize you, not to establish you. So that you can endure with the great endurance in Christ. To learn the word of the Lord more accurately, more specifically and show forth to your children's children what it is to believe in Christ and developing in his word. What blessing, what honor, what glory, not only in this life that we live but also in the life to come for eon and for eon. That is what he is going to bless for us. That is what our Lord really looks into us. That is what really he wants to be for us. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ died once for us and now he reigns sitting at the right hand of Lord God the Father. As we go through the sufferings on this earth, even we go only once in this life, once in the sense till we die. If we suffer with him, says Second Timothy, we shall also reign with him. I think people don't love to reign with him, so they are elevating the suffering by following not the word of the Lord, but following the gimmicks of Satan and tricks of Satan on this earth. Giving more comfort to the flesh. Sitting for one hour and listening the word of the Lord, or kneeling down upon your knees and writing the word of the Lord, preaching by kneeling down upon your knees, Do you know, it is of a great pain but Lord will deliver from all of them because he loves when we humble ourselves before Christ and what you will do in this earth for your flesh give to your wife, to your children, to your parents and what do you give to God at the age of 60 or 70 thinking that now I should serve my God I will come there to serve him while your young carry the burden of the Lord. Neoniscus, you are men before below the age of forty, you have acquired, you have overcome the wicked on this earth. To become Neoniscus, Tecna has been required, not Pidea, Tecna, day by day education, day by day learning, day by day process. Then many will declare the word of the Lord so that they should also be the children of God when they obey. If they're not, they are not children of God. But in order to proclaim the word of God, it demands the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher with a faithful preparation in the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Through the original language of the scriptures, through the concept with the dispensation technique of dispensation. The dispensing technique of dispensation. So that the word of the Lord could be properly honored. But today, what are you doing? Like can you want a mark upon your head or a sign throughout eternity that you were the men who were traitors for God not handling his word accurately? Or you want to show forth something wherewith the entire world or the congregation wherewith you have been served should spit upon you, telling to the point, crucify him, for he did not tell us the truth. Or did not expound the truth. The same crowd cried, Hallelujah, when Christ our Lord was walking with palms on their hands. The same crowd cried, Crucify him on the cross. So should not be the fate of every pastor teacher who wants to preach, who wants to tell, who wants to make something. And without having right information to give to them with the original language of the scriptures being prepared through isagogical, categorical, and exegetical explanation of the word. Without having the right methodology of dividing the word of the Lord through the dispensing technique of dispensation. In fact, even indeed, many people will say dispensationalist is one of the denomination. But the Bible teaches to us minister of God is a dispenser. He is not 
anything which the elders can think. And Ephesians tells for us in 3 1, I have been made a dispenser of you. This particular administration in Christ, this great particular teaching of Christ, this dispensation of our Lord on this earth, dividing between the Israel, the church, and the future eschatology. And many men don't even understand from where is the origin. The origin is from dispensations. There are men who wrongly divide, but there are men who rightly divide. But you can have your good conscious, clear conscious, pure conscious towards Christ our Lord with a pure heart and a pure mind. When you're humble enough to know the truth in the sight of God, Lord directs to you that teaching. Provided when you have a true desire for Christ, a real, real desire for Christ. Not just ending up with morality or morons, but rather telling the word of the Lord in truth to the praise of His glory in His grace. Dear brethren, you need to know about these things. The only suffering what you can go through is to listen to the tapes, attend the church classes of biblical money they are teaching to you every day, without missing even a day. It is Lord who starts for us this race, and anyone who hinders to this race, no matter whoever he may be, says Apostle Paul, in Galatians chapter 5, he will be cursed. And that time he was referring to Peter. Dear brethren, you need to know very accurately the things pertaining to the word of the Lord. The grace being bestowed upon us, the bona fide gift given to every individual believer, particularly for a male one in every era, in every season, in every time. Those who can handle his word accurately, to them our Lord gives this privilege. And we are not here to waste our time by looking vain reasons, to look upon vain thinking, and in search of God roaming around the entire world and losing your valuable time, which is for you to grow up. And if you are a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, your work as a bona fide gifted to the reality of eternal life, for you, you are being called as an ambassador or as a king. You are a royal priest and a royal king. If you have been made kings and priests for Christ, then you need to write Bible once rather than roaming here and there. Sit and write the Bible at least once. There is no one on this earth whom we desire. There is no one in the heaven apart from my Lord when you die and go there to be with Him. His word He has honored His, His, His word He has honored above His name. Then why are we hindering to honor his word above his name? Do the principalities and the powers of your negative thinking will stop? But our Lord says he has triumphed over them and with boldness he came along to tell for us the same thing. I have triumphed. You need not worry. You can trample Satan under your feet. Crushing it down. And the only thing which now hinders is your negative volution. Don't waste time. Time is short. At least try to finish writing once in your entire life the Bible. If we are really truly kings for Christ on this earth. So dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. With our headboard and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without crash, without hope and without eternal life. In order to telling Lord God the Father that you believe upon Christ, that is the moment itself, you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth is for very simple, believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the great man is to grow up in great and all this Bible doctrine. You shall learn to acquire to polish know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teacher, the great man is to carry Sotan Lagan, herald the word in season out of season, because of the diamond from my witnesses, where you have been called. The number one diamond from my witnesses in the infinity, followed by the word in our hands, and number two are here. If there are no years, dear brother, not worry, besides nature, the entire angel of course will be our witnesses. But our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter however the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. 
Father, we are much grateful for this great privilege that was given to us in the completion of canon of your scripture and to reveal us the true life in which you have chosen for us in eternity past to be to get the great maximum glorification for thee of this earth. Father, what else can we ask than to faithfully abide in thy plan like a prisoner to thy glory? Help us to really teach your word as great as we can be on this earth to honor your word above your name. For we ask it in Christ's name, Sovereign Lord. Amen.